When the lower trapezius weakens, several terrible things happen. The first is a change in the shoulder blade's position. It shifts forward and upward. It moves forward due to the shortening of the pectoralis minor muscle and upward due to the shortening of the upper trapezius. And most often this happens simultaneously. In such a position of the shoulder blade, it further complicates the work of the lower trapezius because it is always in a stretched position and is very easily injured. Even if it was initially weak, this position, where the muscle is constantly stretched, creates an even greater risk for muscle injury. That is, it should work with any hand movement to stabilize the shoulder blade so that it does not shift forward. Because if the lower trapezius cannot hold the shoulder blade in the necessary position, then when the hand moves, it changes the angle of movement in the shoulder joint. That is, the shoulder blade should be in the correct position, and then when you raise your hand, well, to the side, for example, or in front of you, just even raise it without weight which you hold. There is even a test you can conduct in front of a mirror. You stand up, and if you raise your hand and see that your upper trapezius starts to strain at the very beginning of the movement, this is also due to the incorrect position of the shoulder blade. That is, when the shoulder blade is slightly forward, when the lower trapezius is weak, you raise your hand more due to the upper trapezius than the deltoid muscle. Such people, when they, for example, train in the gym, do exercises for the deltoid muscles because the upper trapezius is overloaded. After such workouts, they often have headaches because in the overloaded trapezius, trigger points are formed, which create a constant pain impulse. Headaches occur in the ear area, the head area. Pain can radiate from the neck to the head and also to the occiput. By itself, the pectoralis minor muscle will also be overloaded because the lower trapezius does not hold the scapula back. The pectoralis minor muscle constantly has to be in a tense, contracted state because the muscle can feel good when it is alternately tense, relaxes, when it can fully perform its function. One of the main functions of the pectoralis minor muscle is participation in breathing. During inhalation, it lifts the third, fourth, fifth rib upwards. During exhalation, it relaxes. These ribs descend during exhalation. But when the shoulder blade is moved forward, the pectoralis minor muscle is constantly in a shortened state and cannot perform its function. It cannot move the ribs during breathing. They seem to already be in the inhalation phase due to the fact that the muscles are shortened and hold them in this position. The back and costa vertebral joints between the vertebrae and ribs also cannot move due to this muscle spasm. The intercostal muscles also cannot fully function, leading to their shortening. Because of this constant tension, a muscle spasm occurs. There is even more compression of the vascular nerve bundle, which passes under the pectoralis minor muscle. Numbness and weakness in the hand occur. Such people often also notice the change in the color of their skin. It becomes somewhat bluish. This is because the venous lymphatic drainage from the hand is disrupted. Look at your hands. You can go to the mirror and look at your hand. If you see that, by comparison, for example, the color of the hand is different. It can be a bit burgundy or bluish. Raise your hand above your head, stand like this for about 10 to 15 seconds, and see if the hand has changed color. See if it has become similar to the color of a living human body, the same as everything else, this is a sign that venous outflow is also impaired. Constant compression of the vascular nerve bundle also causes dysfunction, impaired nutrition of the nerves that go along the arm and innervate all the muscles of the arm. Often this manifests itself in the form of numbness. For example, 
the ulnar nerve is compressed more, numbness occurs in the little finger, ring finger, median nerve, three remaining fingers. The radial nerve can also be compressed. This can manifest as a weakness of individual muscles, for example, the triceps. There may be less volume, even with constant compression of the pectoralis minor muscle. All this is accompanied by a limitation of chest mobility because with the weakness of the lower trapezius, when the position of the scapula changes, they move forward, and thus the position of the chest changes. So these lower ribs, they also change their position and stop participating in breathing. That is, this body position, it prevents the lower ribs from fully participating during inhalation and exhalation. And under load, the auxiliary respiratory muscles, including the neck and trapezius muscles, start to work intensively, while what should be working cannot be activated at all. And all this is due to this position of the chest when the lower trapezius is so weak that the shoulder blades and ribs are shifted forward and cannot participate in breathing. And in such a position, when the shoulder blade is held back by the lower trapezius, it is very good and very easy for these ribs to participate in breathing. Very often when a person tries to straighten up, he creates excessive tension in the back muscles precisely because the mobility of the chest is limited. When this imbalance occurs, a change in the position of the shoulder blade, this part of the ribs, the floating ribs, part of the ribs, it also becomes immobile. The chest sinks back and forms such a position in which the mobility of the chest is very much limited. In such a state, there is practically no movement in this part of the ribs. The lower part of the ribs does not get any load. It does not participate in the movement and gradually. This is called age-related changes. The ossification of the lower part of the ribs occurs, but in fact, the ossification of that lower part that you do not use occurs. And therefore, in order for this not to happen, there should be good constant movement of the chest. And when the chest is fully functional, a good inhale and exhale is achieved, the back muscles practically do not need to create any efforts to maintain the posture. That is, if you are specifically trying to maintain a posture due to muscle tension, this is also not good because constant muscle tension also causes disruption of the muscle itself. The posture should be maintained due to constant slight certain muscle tone, which create a kind of balance between each other, balancing each other, and including through breathing, through the correct movement of the rib cage. If your rib cage moves well during inhalation and exhalation, then this movement allows you to keep your back straight, among other things. That is, you take a breath, your lower and middle ribs move, and you exhale. And it is these movements that allow you to keep your back in the correct position without any extra effort. If you are in such a position, that is, you will try to do this through muscle tension, but if there is no good mobility of the ribs, it will be practically impossible. That is, the muscles will quickly get tired. Therefore, you need to pay attention to the lower trapezius. At the same time, with its restoration, it is necessary to remove the shortening of the pectoral muscle of the upper trapezius, the muscles that lift the scapula. Because this change is so persistent that even the incorrect movement of the hand is formed. That is, during the step, during the correct movement of the hand, and the work of the back muscles, including during the movement of the hand and the scapula, and due to the shortening of the pectoral muscle and the upper trapezius, they also engage in the step at the wrong moment. And with the movement itself in the step, you overload the upper trapezius. These are the cases when, for example, after walking, after running, such patients develop headaches, neck pain, because with each step they take, this incorrect movement occurs. With each step, their upper trapezius is activated, which should not be working at all at this moment.
It should relax at the moment of hand movement. The back muscles should be working there, but instead their trapezius is activated. Usually this is accompanied by a tilt of the body to the side. Well, that is, it's a general imbalance, but even the impact on some individual parts can also improve the condition. Also, in addition to that, the small chest upper trapezius muscle needs to be stretched, relaxed, remove the tension from them, strengthen the lower trapezius. Also, it is necessary to restore the mobility of the ribs, lower, middle ribs, including the joints between the vertebrae ribs, rib cross joints, because the lower trapezius attaches to these places and everything there should move very well.